Okay, hello everybody and welcome to the Mortic Update. Thanks for joining us here today. If we haven't had the pleasure yet of crossing paths, my name is Ruth Cheesley and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm project lead for Mortic. If my accent doesn't give it away, I'm based in the UK. Whereabouts are you all joining us from today? Pop a note in the chat, say where you're, where you're dialing in from today. It's great to see you all here, to see the whole Mortic community coming together. Where are we all from? I know there's a couple of people here from Germany. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Lucas. Hi from India. Oh, I love the accent. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, if you ever need to reach out to me, uh, please do feel free to ping me on Slack or on the forums or just drop me an email directly. Uh, my door's always open, virtually speaking. Uh, so hopefully by now you'll be familiar with the chat and the Q&A on Airmeet. But if not, check the bar on the side of your window. All right. So let's dive in. So picture the scene as 2014. How many of us here can remember what we were doing back in 2014? Hopefully nobody says they were still at school, although I feel very old. But stick some chat comments in the chat if you can remember what you were doing in 2014. What was happening in the world in 2014? Well, this might help jog your memory. Brazil was hosting the World Cup. I think we've got some people here from Brazil, so I bet you probably remember that. Germany won the World Cup in the 113th minute. I know we've got some people here from Germany who are probably very proud of that. People were chucking buckets of ice all over themselves to raise awareness for ALS. Anybody do that? I didn't, I nipped out of that one. And for the space geeks amongst us, the Rosetta spacecraft landed on a comet. It was quite exciting to me, but nobody else probably cares about that one, so. Great, kids' birthday, kids' first birthday, you were doing Drupal Rahul. <laughs> Two years out of college, nice, awesome. Well, in 2014 as well, a new open source project was just getting created, which would fundamentally change the marketing landscape and bring the power of marketing automation into the hands of tens of thousands of organizations all over the world. And this project would result in bringing you and me here today at this conference. It's hard to believe that next year is going to mark 10 years since that first commit that created Mortic. And some of us here will probably still remember the Mortic of that time. While it wasn't by any means perfect, it was importantly open source and free to be used by anyone. I was so excited back then for my clients, many of whom, including my own business, were getting really bogged down with the proprietary expensive uh, tools that were available at that time for marketing automation. When D.B. Hurley created Mortic as an open source project back in 2014, he fundamentally democratized access to this technology, which to this day is continuing to change lives. Here's just a few examples from across our diverse community of how Mortic has changed the lives of many people from all over the world. Pause while we have a video, one sec takes a little while for the hamsters to run the wheel for the video to start playing. I love the ghost emoji, Cali. Very good. <laughs> oh, okay. I have to stop presenting. Motic has changed the life of web mechanic and all our partner agencies by bringing a robust and reliable marketing automation platform, a great alternative to the US solutions. Hello, my name is Joey Keller. I've been working with Motic for five years now, and I have to say the first steps were really hard, but the community was always very welcoming and they helped me to learn a lot. Working together with the community members in support development, it's a lot of fun and it's really energizing that I feel I can make a difference. I can truly say that without Maltic, my life would be completely different. How did Maltic change my life? Having found this community where you can contribute both as a developer 
as a commercial sales marketing person and as an open source enthusiast, this is the perfect community. So for me, I found a home here to contribute on every level that I'm passionate about. Okay, thanks so much to Norman, Jerry, and Dominique for giving us those little snippets. I'm sure many of you have also got uh, stories about the, what Mortic has meant to your life and the changes it has made to your life. Maybe we can talk about that later on the tables. So here we are, we're nine years in. Those nine years haven't been without their challenges. As a community and as a project, we've been through some really tough times. Heck, the world has been through some really tough, tough times. I remember back in 2019 as a community member hearing the news which came seemingly out of the blue, the announcement that Acquia had acquired Mortic. I remember all the concerns we had back then as a community. Would Mortic continue to be open source? Would we be forced into directions we didn't want to go as an open source project? It was a really deeply unsettling time for all of us, but despite that, I think that we've come through it much stronger. And although there have been tough times, there's also been some really great times. I remember when we first got together in Amsterdam back in 2019 to try and figure out a way to empower people to step up and take on moving Mortic forwards with our first ever governance model and also kickstarting the Mortic 3 migration project. How many of us here were in that? Uh, that community sprint. I think a couple of us were in that sprint. Chuck, chuck it in the comments if you were in, the, in that event. And who remembers our first ever Morticon back in the height of the pandemic? A ray of sunshine to me personally to connect with over 300 of you in the midst of what seemed like endless months of solitude. How many of you came along to that one? Maybe chuck some heart emojis if you were at uh, Morticon 2020. I think it was November 2020, wasn't it? That was a lot of fun and quite crazy as well. Um, what about last year's event in Brazil where we saw over a hundred passionate Morticon, uh, morticians coming together to learn, to share and create in our biggest ever in-person conference? I think a couple of you were there. I think we may have some of our Brazilian community in the chat who were also there. It was absolutely awesome. The energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm was just amazing. So as a community, we've really learned and grown together over these years. We've started to find our own way as an open source project. Probably the biggest step on that journey has been the recent news about Mortic becoming an independent open source project, which was announced back in mid-April. I'm sure that most of you have heard about this, but we'll share some links in the chat for you to read if you want to dive into more detail about this update. There's also a panel immediately following this keynote where you will have an opportunity to ask questions of the current leadership team. I'd encourage you to have a read of those articles if you haven't come across them before and join that panel if you've got any questions. So this last step, this was a massive change. It's a huge shift for us, a massive step forward for Mortig. You could say one giant leap for Morty kind. Come on, I had to make a way to make a Morty astromorph fly across the screen, didn't I? So I really believe that this decision to move forward independently and to carve our own path is absolutely the right thing for us to do as a project at this time. Up to this date, there's always been an organization that has been responsible for Mortic. In the early days, it was Mortic Inc. And then later it was Acquia. That corporate support's been really invaluable in giving Mortic the solid foundations it needed, driving the reputation of Mortic as a product, and most importantly, providing the resources of engineers to help with building and maintaining Mortic, but also a full-time maintainer role in myself as community manager and project lead. We're now taking the path which is gonna be a slightly more challenging adventure there's going to be some rough terrain and some swampy bogs on this journey that we're going to have to find our way through. But I do truly believe it's the right route for us to take, especially when we think about Mortic's stability, autonomy and the potential for growth in the longer term. And we're already unlocking innovation. We're already seeing contributors coming forward to support Mortic. 
we're seeing cross-company collaboration across the board with the Mortic 5 project, working together to deliver improvements to Mortic and create stable foundations for future growth. I'm really confident that with you all alongside us, supporting us, cheering us on, we're going to find our own way on this journey just fine. But I'm sure when you first read the news about our move to become an open source independent project, there may have been a few questions that, and, and concerns that arose about how that would happen. And one of the key steps we have to take on with this bold new adventure is developing a new governance model. So the current governance model was heavily uh, involved by Acquia and it sees Acquia embedded across multiple areas. And that served us well to this point, but it doesn't serve us going forwards. So we're now in the process of looking at developing a new governance model, something that will enable us to provide clarity on participation and decision-making leadership and governance in our community. And if you haven't come across the term before, a governance model is, sorry, let me start that again. If you haven't come across the term before, a governance model in an open source project is a bit like a constitution in a democratic country. So just like a constitution outlines the rules and the principles which govern how a country's decision making happens and what the power structure is, a governance model in an open source project outlines the rules and the principles that govern an open source project's decision making and power structure. So we're already in the middle of a process of discussion, debate and iteration, which you can all contribute towards until tomorrow evening after which we will be drafting a first formal proposal for further community review and hopefully after that acceptance and adoption. It's been so great to see rigorous debates happening in Slack in the forums with ideas and suggestions being put forward to help us come to a point where we have a first idea of what our new governance model is going to look like. I'm really excited that this process will enable our community to be clearer about how decisions are made, to empower members to have a say, to move us all towards what lies under the hood of the product and the community. It's also really, really important for the longer term sustainability of this project, giving clear guidelines on continuity and leadership, for example. We have to make sure that we take these bold steps now in a way that we are laying down solid foundations for future growth. So please check out the discussions on the forum, maybe not right this second, but after the session or later tonight or tomorrow. And even if you think it's okay and you don't have any issues or comments or anything, please add your comment to say, I think this is great, I'm good to go. Because it's important that we hear the positive voices as well as hearing the people who think that there may, be, may need to be some tweaks and changes. So that's one important thing that's going to be happening in the near future. But what about how things have been doing to date? So let's go on an adventure into the land of all things data. As some of you will know, yeah, it's not really a secret. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to spreadsheets. Um, so you may have to just indulge my nerdiness for a bit whilst I, whilst I nerd out over this data. So uh, recently, we started tracking things in more detail and creating open startup reporting. If you haven't caught my open startup reports, over the last few months, I've been sharing more detail on the Mautic blog on how we're doing, giving a bit more insight into what goes on behind the scenes and where we're at. You can catch up with the reports on mau.tc slash open startup or on the link that's just been shared in the chat. Thank you, Madeline. Uh, it's quite an interesting journey through the data and I think there might be some things that surprise you. So let's start with how many people are actually using Mautic. Now, if you've checked the open startup reports or you've watched the webinar or you know the answer to this, then shh, keep quiet. But for those of you who haven't or don't know, have a guess at how many people worldwide you think are using Mautic right now, the number of live Mautic instances. So chuck some numbers in the, in the chat. Okay, 100,000, interesting. So this data comes from builtwith.com who have really kindly given us a pro account. 
And that means that we can get more accurate information on the number of live instances of MORTIC. So from this data, Pratik, I think you knew the answer to that because it was your webinar that I mentioned this number in. <laughs> so from this data, which you can nerd out with alongside me on the Open Startup blog, I put a link to the actual spreadsheet so you can go and have a look at the data. Um, we know that MORTIC adoption is continuing to rise not as steeply as it did back in 2019, but we're still seeing a steady rate of growth. And this is not all instances of war, this is showing all instances of MORTIC. So we're not just talking about self-hosted open source here. This is also including MORTIC-based SaaS providers. And the reason I say this is because the success of MORTIC depends on all of us working together. No matter how you're using MORTIC, you're a mortician. You're part of this project and you're part of our success. We're also seeing a steady growth of interest from developers who are favoriting our main GitHub repository, especially when you look at our growth compared against other open source projects in a timeline. Now, sure, we're not growing on as fast as trajectory as uh, WordPress, but still we're actually doing pretty well. We can always do better, but we're doing pretty well. And Mortic's also getting recognized in external awards. So just this month, we heard that we won the marketing automation category for the 20 IFOS awards. This is a huge recognition of all the work that goes into creating MORTIC by everyone who volunteers or contributes in this way. So a really big thank you to everyone because this is your award really. And speaking about all those awesome people, let's dive into more depth about contributions. So aside from adoption, we're also seeing a strong growth in contributors across the many channels that we track in the community. If you compare this chart from this time last year, you can see that we're nudging up to around 100 more contributions per month. From the traditional coding contributions through to testing, reviewing those contributions, supporting the marketing team, the education team, helping to run meetups, running this event, speaking at events, writing reviews about Mortic and more. We're definitely maturing in that sense, having a strong profile of contributions, which is an important signal of a healthy open source project and something we definitely need to continue to grow. And the great thing is as well, that these aren't just coming from existing contributors working harder, although many of them are working harder, uh, but we are actually onboarding on average around 10 to 12 new contributors every month. Now Q2 is slightly lower because we haven't finished Q2 and this, this data is about a week old. Uh, so that's why there's a bit of a dip there. This is really important because we absolutely need to have a much wider base of contributors. Right now, we still have far too much falling on the shoulders of far too few people. When we have more people doing smaller amounts, things get done much faster. So don't ever think that you can't make a difference or someone else will do it because you can make a difference and they probably won't. So let's dig into the contributions a bit deeper and see where they're actually coming from. Here you can see the top 10 companies over the past year based on the number of contributions from people associated with that company. If you bump into anyone from these companies over the course of this event, please do be sure to thank them. These folks, along with others, are making MORTIC. They're fundamentally helping us create a better MORTIC, a better community, and through that, a better world. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Without you, we would not be where we are today. But in a community, contributions aren't everything. We also have to take into account the people and organizations who show up, who engage with others, who take part in conversations in our community. Let's face it, without those conversations, the community would not be as fun a place to be. So here we've got the most active companies. These are the companies who have team members consistently showing up, engaging in discussions, helping to create a vibrant community, so again, a really big thanks to all of you. And while we're talking about companies, I'd also like to make a really big shout out to all of the sponsors who stepped up to support Mortic Conference Global this year. We really wouldn't be able to organize this event without your support. So a big thanks to all of these companies. 
Likewise, thank you to our monthly sponsors. These folks are consistently donating a, a amount of money. It can be anything from $10, $50 to a couple of hundred dollars or more every month, which gives us the income we need to support Mortic. And finally, thank you to our partners. So to become a Mortic community partner, it's quite special. You have to financially contribute regularly, um, but you also have to be practically contributing. And today we're actually welcoming a new community partner in Comarch. So this is a company who have been giving us around about four developers to contribute within the Mautic 5 project consistently over the last few months. And have also been a long-term financial sponsor. So a big, big thank you to Comarch for joining us as a, as a partner. And the partners page will be coming up on the website very soon, um, as soon as it gets signed off and what have you. So that's companies. Again, massive, massive thanks to everyone. It really does make a big difference. What about the individual humans who have contributed over the last year? So these are the top individual contributors who are making Mautic. Here's where we get to see that the, the humans who are building Mautic, nurturing this community, creating the foundations for our future growth. So a massive thanks to everyone on this list, but also a big thanks to everyone who's made any contribution of any kind. Please know that you're deeply appreciated and we are so grateful for all of your efforts, big and small, which benefit Mortic. And I just want to stop and say, these are some pretty incredible numbers when you look at them. So just under one and a half contributions every single day from John, for example. I mean, that's just amazing. So yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. And just as with the most active companies, let's look at the individuals who light up our community, the people who bring their enthusiasm for Mortic to bear on our community and help others to grow and succeed with Mortic. And again, some amazing numbers here. I confess, I do sometimes wonder if Jerry answers forum posts in his sleep because he's there so often, or maybe he's trained his cats to use chat GPT to reply. I, I, mean, I don't know, but anyway, who knows? But seriously, a really big thanks to everyone who's on this list and every one of you who takes time out of your day to engage with our community. And I also want to just recognize the small group of individual personal contributors who are making financial contributions to Mortic every month. Thank you all for your support. So with this being said, we are seeing strong growth in the community. We're seeing growth in adoption of Mortic based solutions. The data shows this, but also generally, I feel the buzz, the excitement in the community. It feels like we're really on the brink of something very exciting. I'm sure many of you experience this too. So speaking of exciting things, last weekend, my green fingered mother and sister carted me off to Gardeners World Live, which apparently is very exciting, uh, which for those of you who are not aware, it's a massive exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham, dedicated to plants, flowers, and everything to do with gardening. And let me tell you something first, I am not a gardener. My garden currently resembles something of a jungle. Uh, so you can imagine how much fun that weekend was for me, with my sister and my mom being very talented at gardening. But anyway, it was really nice to hang out with them. And that aside, I got chatting to one of the exhibitors at the event because they had this massive bush of uh, bamboo, uh, which you can see behind me in the picture there. And bamboo has always fascinated me because it has some really interesting qualities and they're qualities that I think we could learn from as we continue this trajectory of growth. Resist the urge to chat GPT qualities of bamboo because I'm going to tell you about them. I know some of you are doing it. Stop. Bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants on the planet with some of the species reaching over 100 foot in height. And can you believe that it's actually a species of grass? I was chatting to someone and they told me this and I was just like, what? 100 foot tall grass, which is basically what my garden resembles right now. But anyway, the less we say about that, the better. Who knew? Uh, so bamboo, when it has the right conditions to grow, it can reach that full height in a matter of years. And instead of making really deep roots for something that tall, you'd expect that it would have really deep roots right in the ground to make sure it doesn't fall over. Actually, it doesn't do that. What it does is it has things called rhizomes. So you didn't know you were going to have a gardening lesson when you came to this, did you? Which shoot out sideways 
And rather than going deep down for security, it lays out wide networks of roots and shoots, letting it take on board nutrients and water as much as possible from as wide an area as possible. And it also means that the soil around it is much more secure and less likely to be susceptible to erosion. So these 100 foot tall giants are also capable of surviving intense, harsh weather, thanks to the way they grow together and the ability to bend and flex rather than break due to changing conditions when they're under strain. So you're probably thinking at this moment, OK, all well and good, Ruth, but why, why do I need a gardening lesson? What's going on? What, what has this got to do with Mautic? Well, I've been thinking a lot about how we can take Mautic to the next level and how we can, you, to use the cliche, supercharge Mautic's development, growth and prominence in the world. So how can we get to a point where Mautic-based solutions are on top of the pile when someone is thinking about adopting a, mort a marketing automation tool? And when I think about this, I come back to these forests of bamboo. If we water our community, oops, sorry, if we water and nurture our community, immense growth is possible. If we widen our base of support, so we're less dependent on a small number of benevolent organizations to support our project, we can absorb a more, we can absorb more of what we need from a wider area. We can avoid the erosion in the form of burnout and over-dependence. And more importantly, the success and growth of one will positively reinforce and support the success and growth of others, encouraging sustainable growth for years to come. And the other thing I really love about bamboo is its versatility. I mean, it can be used for just about everything you can think of, from uh, scaffolding to musical instruments to bridges to anything, basically. And the same is true of Mautic, I think. We've heard today, and we'll no doubt hear more later this afternoon and tomorrow, just a tiny drop in the ocean of the ways that Mautic is being used right now. The possibilities are endless. So just like a forest of bamboo, there's of course threats to our project and our community, which might hold us back from being able to drive that growth that I believe we're capable in of. First and foremost, we have to water and nurture our community consistently and with the right nutrients. We have to learn from our past mistakes of being too dependent on one or two benevolent organizations for the things that we need to sustain us. It's time for us all to become gardeners. It's time for us all to start nurturing Mautic's forest. Some of the ways you can help with that are by telling people about Mautic, by becoming a monthly financial sponsor, either as a company or an individual or both, or by giving us your valuable time and that of your teams to help us with tasks that enable us to grow. And we'll talk more about that later. But probably one of the biggest threats to any living organism are pests and diseases. And the same is true of an open source project and community. OK, this one's a bit of a stretch, but bear with me. So on the practical side, we're snagging bugs with the software and we're fixing them promptly. And we're picking up on parts of the software which are starting to wither from neglect. And this is something that we're starting to work on with much more focus already. Over the last three years, for example, we've gone from under a third to over a half of our code being checked by automated tests, making for a more stable and reliable software. With Mautic 5, our community developers have been stripping out and updating literally hundreds of thousands of lines of code dating back to Mautic 2, moving us up to a more modern coding techniques, the latest versions of the libraries we depend on, and writing much more reliable code. We really are building those solid foundations for growth. But this also relates to our wider community. Mautic has become a really welcoming, friendly community of people who care about each other's success and who go out of their way to help each other we assume positive attempt, intent. We find ways to come to an understanding of each other's views. It's a nice place to be. It's a nice place to contribute. And people genuinely care about each other. We really have to consider this to be a precious thing, something that's important. And we have to take decisive action when it's threatened to safeguard the forest, i.e. the community as a whole. So just recently, we had to ban an individual because their behavior was fundamentally at odds with those values. And while it's never something taken lightly, 
I feel very strongly that we really have something special in this community. It's something that will support us as we grow and that creates a safe, welcoming space into which we can bring and onboard new contributors. And we really have to take that seriously. We'll only be able to grow and thrive as an open source project if people feel happy and safe to participate in these spaces. But we also have to address the huge imbalance which we, along with most open source projects, experience in terms of the folks taking from the project without adding anything back in to keep things sustainable. Of course, it's really your right to do that when you use open source. But just because you can get something for free without giving back doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. We need to cultivate an eco awareness around Mautic and send a very clear message that it's vital to our continued growth and indeed our long term survival for the balance to tip in favor of people giving back to Mautic in whatever way is possible for them to do so. Now, if we have any eco warriors who have ideas for how we can do this, I would love to hear from you. Come and chat with me on a table after the panel, after this session, um, and let's get some ideas flowing or feel free to ping me. So what I'm going to share with you now are some ideas for how we're planning to tackle some of these challenges that face us. How we're going to plan to see, excuse me, how we're planning to seed and grow our forest, to nurture our forest and to set us up for success as an open source project. So while it's really awesome to have all of these great contributors that we were talking about just earlier, we also recognize that to really grow Mautic to the next level, to make the kind of progress that I know we're capable of making, we need more people to be involved. And for that to happen, we need to get better at supporting people who come into the community to understand how they can contribute how they get started with Mautic and to nurture them along this journey. We also need to give companies clear ways that they can contribute and demonstrate the return on investment associated with empowering their staff to give back to Mautic. We're already piloting some projects in the product team at the moment on the mentoring side. And we're also looking at doing some research in this area. So if you're interested to know more, please reach out to Mohamed Abu Musa in the product team or drop me a message and I can connect you. Another essential factor in growing and supporting the Mautic community is growing and supporting our local communities around the world. In fact, in some ways, this is going to be critical to our success. Pre-pandemic, we had several lively communities which were holding regular meetups. The image in the bottom left here was a Mautic meetup that I attended and spoke at in 2016. And the top left is of our lovely folks in Sao Paulo. And on the right are the people who joined us at Mautic Conference South America last November. We've also had some really great innovations in the pandemic, like the popular Dutch speaking uh, meetup group, which we meets once a month for geographically diverse German speaking community online. And we had our Mautic help desk meetup group, which ran for many months during the pandemic, helping people with challenges they faced with Mautic. But we've never really driven any growth in our local community groups. We need to bring together our community often through meetups, through conferences, through social events, pizza bug and fun events, so that we can start to build that web of connections, both online and in person. Those connections are the heartbeat of Mautic. They're what brings the joy of connection and makes my lovely Astro Mort jiggle with excitement. You can help us with this. So why not start a local meetup group in your local area or organize a multi camp in your country? So we have a multi camp coming up, first one ever in Lagos, Nigeria, towards the end of this year. But you could organize one in your country. What about having a bug squashing event at your company, for example? I would love us to develop an ambassador program where we have people in countries, in regions, in cities, and maybe even in workplaces who become a Mautic ambassador 
and they're the key person for organizing events, pro promoting Mautic, building a team of like-minded community builders who want to spread, spread the word and the love of Mautic. I think there are many of you listening to this talk today who would make amazing ambassadors for Mautic. All we need is for some folks to raise their hands and help us to get this kind of program up and running. Anything that helps bring people together will help us to grow Mautic. So ask yourself, why not? What's holding me back from stepping up to do that? And if that is something that's at our end, like a lack of support or understanding of what you can do or resources, please let us know so we can fix that. So head over to the community channel on Slack if you're interested or reach out to me directly. And of course, if you're inspired to help us in this way and you want to get things moving in your area, just let us know. So we've spoken a bit about the governance changes. We've talked about how we're going to grow the community. Let's move on to an equally exciting topic, Mautic the product. So I know we've all been waiting with bated breath for news of Mautic 5, and I've got some updates for you on that. We are planning to release Mautic 5 Alpha no later than the 30th of June. And I say no later than because there is a possibility that we might get all the outstanding tasks completed before then. And in that case, we will release as soon as we have the marketing and educational teams ready with the supporting resources. And I also don't want to release on a Friday. So I would like it to be a few days earlier. I'm so excited to see this release finally getting shipped. I know it's long overdue. But when you understand the scale of the work that has been done, you'll have a better understanding of why we've taken this long to get it finished. To date, there have been 6,544 files updated with Mautic 5 Alpha, 161,240 lines of code have been added, 490,982 lines of code have been removed. 497 pull requests have been merged, 11 are waiting to be merged, 191 of those were bug fixes, 10 were new features, 120 were enhancements to existing features, 11 were involved with updating our dependencies, and 21 to help improve performance and scalability. I think that's pretty amazing. Like, just those numbers are just mind boggling. So I'm not going to spill the beans on all the exciting features and enhancements that I'll be shipping. You'll have to wait for the release to learn about that. Or you can get involved with testing, and then you'll find out for yourself. But as a teaser, here's some of the things that you can expect. You'll have the potential to send messages at least five times faster, even at scale with Mautic 5. You'll be able to send transactional emails to users who have set do not contact. So you can send them important communications like password reset requests and account information through Mautic. You'll be able to use custom fonts in the Grapes.js builder. You'll have more webhooks, and they're going to work much more efficiently. There's going to be some cool engagement information on your contact profiles. And also, you'll be able to use PHP 8.1 on your server. There's lots more, but that's just a bit of a taster of what's coming. I do also want to highlight the amount of work that has been done to build solid foundations for the future growth that we've been talking about. With Mautic 5, we've gone from 46% of our code being covered by automated tests, which pick up bugs before they get out to our users, to over 57%. And bear in mind, when we started with Mautic 3, we were at 35%, and we're now at 57 That's a huge improvement. So I want to say a really big thank you to every single developer who patiently writes tests, which are really hard to do, often technically quite challenging, brain scratching, how am I going to do this things, and often quite boring uh, to help Mautic become more stable. We really value your time, your expertise, and your attention to detail in helping us make Mautic better. We've also updated pretty much all of our dependencies, which power Mautic, some of which hadn't been touched since Mautic 1 and Mautic 2 days. We've moved to a more modern and more sustainable way of managing them, 
so that going forwards, we can stay up to date much easier with the latest and secure versions of the software that we depend on. So we've wandered around the nice, comfortable terrain of the awesome people and organizations in our community. But now we're going to venture into some le slightly less warm and fuzzy lands and talk about money for a bit. I know it's often a difficult thing to talk about, but here's something we have to get comfortable with talking about. Here's the cold facts. Our monthly income will currently keep the project running for about as uh, for our core infrastructure, our host fees, and our basic expenses, like ordering swag and sending it to our amazing contributors. But our current income won't support us growing Mautic to where we want it to be as a tool of choice when it comes to selecting an infrastructure for marketing automation. Right now, we're trying to grow our forest in a drought. We've got a bit of a buffer zone until the end of the year, but after then, things are going to get pretty challenging if we don't act to set up the right conditions here and now for sustainable growth. To really grow, it's clear that we need to have dedicated resources who can lead the project. We need dedicated developers who can work on and manage projects, help fix bugs, make releases and support new contributors and keep things moving forwards. And we can't afford to rely on companies providing us with those resources. Company priorities change, redundancies ensue, then we stand the risk of losing those precious resources, just like many other open source projects have done in recent years. If we want more to grow, we need to manage and control our own destiny. And we need to do that centrally as our own organization with our own priorities. And we can only do that if we're in a more financially healthy position. If we're able to provide the nourishment and nutrients we need to grow our forest healthily, and what I'm about to share are some of the ways that we're addressing this as a project. But if you have other ideas, please join us on Slack in the working group called Fundraising. So WG hyphen fundraising on Slack. We'd absolutely love to hear them. And you know, there's a great quote. Oh, sorry about the slide. Yes, I'll figure that out. Hang on a sec. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, there's a great quote by Danny O'Brien which I came across this thanks to a random chat I had a few weeks back with one of our community contributors, Sven Doring. It's written in an essay called The Technium 1000 True Fans. And here's the quote, which I have slightly tweaked for our purposes, but it, it, you get the spirit. So to be a successful open source project, you don't need millions. You don't need millions of dollars or millions of contributors, millions of users or millions of fans. You just need thousands of true fans who fully support everything you do. I really love this idea and I feel like it's really true. Aiming for millions might be our long-term goal, but to get there, we don't need to have millions of people supporting us. Don't get me wrong, that would be nice. We do need to have hundreds, maybe thousands of people who care enough about Maltic to financially support us. So right now we have 32 regular monthly supporters. Also just to note, in this chart, which is also from our open startup reporting, the actual number of contributors is slightly lower because the GitHub sponsors income comes in one chunk, not as individuals. So we can't extrapolate that out into individuals. So we are growing our financial base, but it's growing very slowly. Are you up for helping us reach our first 100 people who are willing to support Mortic? Our first 1,000 fans? Hopefully you are. Hopefully we can see this grow over the coming weeks and months. So here's some of the things we're working on to help us with growing our financial and fan base, hopefully. And remember what I said before about the roots in the forest. We want to have several diverse revenue streams, which will allow us to establish our stable, well-supported forest. So with that in mind, firstly, we're introducing a range of benefits which will be provided to companies who sponsor Maltic. We'll be announcing these next month following consultation with existing sponsors and folk from outside our community and other open source projects have been giving us feedback over the last few months. This will range from the basics like having a do follow link from mortic.org at some tiers to things like being able to run approved promotional campaigns, having us help promote webinars or events, co-authoring content for the mortic.org blog and having complimentary tickets for our official events, for example. 
I believe that this, when it's combined with the fact that we can now accept donations from many countries in a tax efficient way, which means that you can probably claim your tax back on your contributions, will lead to us raising about half of the extra funds that we need to hit our growth targets for this year. Next up, we're working, as I mentioned earlier, on the new governance model, which will provide a much more grassroots democratic way for people to get involved in decision making within Maltic. Part of this project involves earning voting rights by becoming an individual contributor financially at a minimum rate which is re relevant to your country based on the Big Mac index with a base of $100 in the USA. This would mean if you're in, the, in America, you would have the option to contribute $100 a year to become a member of the Mortic General Assembly. In Brazil, it would be more like $80 a year. In India, more like $40. And Egypt, closer to $20. So don't get concerned because we also have a route for you to earn voting rights by contributing your time. And this is a proposal right now. It's not been adopted yet. So you can get voting rights by contributing your time rather than your financial resources. But I'm hopeful this will also help us see a strong uptake on individuals who are willing to support Mautic in this way. Which brings us another revenue stream to support the project and also a way for people to be actively engaged in the governance and growth of Mautic. I'm expecting maybe around 10% of the income we, extra income we need this year to come through individual donors, which is about 100-ish people in our community being willing to support Mautic with a $100 a year donation. Given we've just over 100 people attending today and over 30,000 active instances, I'm hopeful that this is a realistic target. So we're up to about 60% of what we need to raise. Another project which I mentioned uh, just a couple of days ago, which launched, is a request for proposals to have an official provider of trials of Mautic. This would also serve the project by have, helping users get started quickly with Mautic with minimum hassle, getting people into Mautic through a supportive process with an onboarding routine so they can figure things out without having the technical overhead of setting it up themselves. Having an official trial provider which solely demonstrates the open source product without any corporate customization and also creating a revenue stream for the community whereby when those trials convert into a customer, we receive a percentage of that uh, amount that is being paid, at least 40%. So that would be a really nice revenue stream. And also it would help people who are using Mautic get started. I'm hopeful that once it's up and running, this will be between 10 to 20% of the income that we need to raise this year. So that brings us to around 80%. And the remaining 20%, I expect us to bring in through other funding channels, which include, for example, the swag shop sales revenue, which was mentioned earlier, the Morticon event profits, ad hoc advertising, and also income from one-time donations, project funding, and other initiatives. If you have any other ideas for ways we can run, raise revenue in Mortic, I'd love to hear them. So for Mautic to grow and thrive and be sustainable, we need to develop a broad base of support with contributors coming up into Mautic from across companies, across countries, across all areas of our project. Together, we all grow stronger. So we've expand, explored ways we're working on growing our community, news on the product development side, and we've also touched on the important governance model discussions. Don't forget to leave your comments after this session or later today on those proposals. And we've also talked money and how we're planning to, dive, uh, to develop diverse revenue streams to support Mautic's plan for growth in the future. So all that remains is for me to briefly sum up in six very short snappy slides. One, our community is a living, growing forest. And for us to grow, we need to become gardeners. We need to care for, nurture and support Mautic. That's now down to all of us. Two, in growing our community, we need to build a diverse, well-rooted base. A wider base of support means we're less likely to have folk burnout, less dependent on individual revenue sources, and build a healthier ecosystem as a result. Three, our forest needs regular water and nutrients. We need to set up the conditions needed for Mautic to thrive. We can't just rest back and expect to be supported anymore. It's on us to make this work, 
we need your help to do this. The health of our community is absolutely paramount. We must be good custodians of our culture, our values, and what makes Maltic a great place to be for future generations. Five, we need to create an ecosystem which is based on a culture of generosity. We need to encourage and incentivize the act of giving back more than you take. We need to encourage supporting and caring about our ecosystem and enable people to do that in whatever way is possible for them. Six, yes, we made it to six. If we get all of these right, we're gonna be thrusting up for the skies before you know it. I truly believe we can make huge leaps forwards, but we need the support of the entire community to make it happen. So how are you gonna play a part in Mortic's success? So thank you all for your time. I appreciate for some of you, this is maybe quite early. For others of you, you're probably wishing about now you'd actually got lunch rather than chatting with people over the break. Uh, without further ado, let's see what questions I can answer. Uh, I'll have a quick look in the Q&A. Madeline, would you be able to bring them onto the stage for me? I, I don't think I can do that. Okay. How should we see the Mortic in market to withstand the other tools? Proprietary open source or closed source? I'm not sure I understand the question. Could you maybe add a comment to just clarify what you mean? The, I'm wondering if you're talking about, for example, like do we need to add more features and things like that? Can I come back to this one and give Rahul a minute just to add a comment on that? Um, let me have a look. How should I start or run the local meetup group? Need help with the data. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Um, so if you go to contribute.mortic.org and have a look under the community team, there's a section, I think, about um, setting up uh, Mortic meetups. If someone can find the link for me, they can drop it in the chat. Uh, basically, you need to decide where you want to meet, the geographic area. Generally, we suggest you find someone else who wants to run the meetup group with you because it is really hard work doing it just by yourself. And the best place to do that is go to the Mortic forums. Um, it, I think, Rahul, you're in India, so there's a section of Mortic in India, and I know for a fact there's a bunch of people in there who've been talking about organizing meetups. So find someone else, at least one person, who wants to run it with you. Ideally, find have a think about where maybe you could meet. If there's a university or there's a company you work for who has an office you could rent or borrow, uh, that's great. And then just let us know um, and let us know. Ideally, we would say try and plan a couple of meetups. So you've got like two meetups that people can sign up for. And then we can get you set up and start help you promote it and everything. And we've got some people in the community who've been doing meetup groups really successfully. So they're also happy to share their knowledge and share their expertise. Um, so hopefully that helps. What's the best way we can help the 5.0 testing? Is there a test plan we can see to match up with our skills and availability? Okay, so number one, the best thing to do is to join uh, the, the channel on Slack. So if you're not yet on Slack, you can go to mau.tc forward slash Slack hyphen invite. Um, someone can probably drop that in the chat for me. Um, that will get you into our Slack community. And then the, the product team channel is t hyphen product. Now, every week on a Friday, we do open source Friday sprints. And that's where we'll be looking at the things that are needed to be tested for whatever our goal is. So it might be the next release of four, it might be the next, like 4.10, it might be the things that are blocking the five release. We've also got lots of documentation online. So if you go to another link, mau.tc forward slash contribute, You'll land on a page which tells you how to contribute with loads of different skills, writers, designers, developers. If you go to testers, that actually takes you through how to test in the browser using Gitpod. So you click a button and it spins up an instance of Mortic with that feature or bug fits applied, which you can then go through and test. And it also explains how to report back your testing. So hopefully that gives you enough information, uh, John, but if not, feel free to reach out to me or any of the team, and we'll be more than happy to get you onboarded. 
Any other questions? Let's have a look. Ah, oh, there was a comment. How will Mortic commit? Let me start that again. Wait, my mouth has gone a bit dry. How will Mortic compete with other tools? Compete is not the word I'm looking for. Here. Okay, so how are we going to stay relevant in the uh, the whole like Mortic and other products uh, discussion? I'll take my slides off now. Um, so. I think it's a really good question. Um, I sort of answered this a little bit in a webinar I did with Accelerant recently, when I said that recently we've been focusing over the last few years very much on stability. Uh, stability has been a big pain point for us. And we've done a huge amount of work and Mortic 5 is, is a massive, massive undertaking. But because of that, a lot of our resources have just not been able to look at features because we've been so absorbed with doing the basic the basic fundamentals that we need to stay up to date. So going forwards, I feel like that we're now able to take a bit of a breath once we get this release out, and we're able to set up the infrastructure within the team so that we can have people who are working on features and people who are working on dependency updates and people who are working on other things. But to date, we just haven't had enough people. The other thing is businesses who are using Mortic Often they will create their own features or they will create their own plugins and things. Sometimes those plugins and features can be really, really helpful in core. So I would also encourage people, if they've got an idea or a proposal or something that they want to contribute, do just let us know in the product team. Give us a bit of a demo of what it is. And if you think it's something that could come into core, we'll absolutely meet with you. And we had a discussion on this about something just recently, which I'm not going to talk too much about. but a developer who had developed something who wants to contribute it to core. Um, just be mindful of the fact that we have a community release cycle, uh, so it's not going to get merged within a month or something. It will take a little bit of time. So I feel like over the next few years, we have the capacity to focus a bit more on feature parity, on developing new features. And the best thing you can do really as marketers is to surface the things that you feel like Mortic really needs to have improved. And then when we hear that feedback, we can start to think about what's relevant for us to bring into core, what might be better as a plugin and so forth. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Rahul? Otherwise, I think we're just about done. I did not have a chance to catch up with all the chat in the uh, channel, but great to have you all here. Thank you all so much for everything you do for Mortic, for being here and supporting Mortic. It's really awesome. And I hope you enjoy the next session. I'm going to hop off to the panel uh, in the other channel. Oh, no, in this channel, I think. Um, but yeah, wonderful. Thanks very much. Critique. Anything. You, you only have 30 seconds to tell everybody at Modicon about Accelerant. Hey everyone, Excellent is a global open source technology company. We help build digital experiences at scale. We build, create, optimize them. Uh, we work with technologies like Drupal, WordPress, Mautic, uh, multi-tenant solutions with Mautic and more. But just don't take my word for it. Uh, we have worked for customers like UNSC, Charo, SCHR, Red Hat, Staples and more. So if you're looking for a partner to help you navigate this complex open source ecosystem. Critique. We only have...